Hi guys, welcome to Myth Busting Part 3. You loved the first two parts and you gave me loads of ideas to try, so here they are. If you want to be featured in Part 4, leave all of your grounded myths down below. The first myth we have today is myth. Can you use explosives to unlock Grassmaster? Grassmaster is a mutation in the game that unlocks after you cut down 50 grass blades that helps you chop grass faster. Usually, you chop grass with an axe, but does it work if you use other methods like explosives? First, we have the splat burst. And surprisingly, this did indeed unlock Grassmaster, which I didn't expect it to do. Next, I wanted to test out the explosive burr trap. I thought that these would work since the splat burst worked, but for some reason they don't. So the myth is true for the splat burst, but it's busted for the burr trap. The second myth we have today is myth. Can you get tier two of coupe de gras without using a tier three tool? Everyone knows that to get tier two of coupe de gras, you have to roll a 20 on the dice in the minotaur maze, but it's very hard to move the dice. Usually I use a tier three termite ax, but can you do it with a tier 2 tool or weapon? After testing all weapons, I found that with a charged attack from a black ant sword, you can indeed roll the dice and unlock tier 2 of this mutation. Myth confirmed. The third myth in today's video is myth. The beehive still exists in the game. Now for those who don't know, there used to be a beehive on the picnic table in the west of the map. It got removed in the bug strike back update and replaced by a honeypot. But, is the beehive still in the game? The answer is, yes, of course it is. As you can see, I built all the way up into the oak tree, and the beehive is attached to one of the branches. You can still walk inside of the beehive too, but you can't walk on any of the branches or leaves this high up in the tree, so you've got to be very careful. Up next, we have a myth from Frasney, and they ask, Myth. Cookbook recipes with the same effect are equally strong no matter if you cook the tier 1 or tier 2 version. First, I got a baseline test by dropping with no meals equipped. As you can see, it hurt a lot. Next, I ate the nachos and dropped from the same height. As you can see, it greatly reduced the damage I took. I then tried again with the mac and bees and I had the exact same health. This means Frasny is right, this myth is confirmed. They both protect you the same amount regardless of the tier of the meal, meaning the only difference between the meals is how long the effect lasts. The tier 1 meal lasts 12 minutes, the tier 2 meal lasts 16 minutes. I also tested it after eating both meals, but the effects do not stack sadly. Next, I would thought I'd try the meals that increase your attack stamina. First, I'll test it without using any of the meals. As you can see, I can do three full combos and two additional attacks. After eating the Mite Loaf, I'm able to do four full combos, which is one additional attack. After eating the Fungus Pacho, I'm able to do four full combos, which is one additional attack over no meal, but the same number of attacks as the Mite Loaf, proving yet again the meals are equal. The next myth we have today will remind you of the previous episode. Myth. Can you kill a grub underground while using a spiky burr? We've tested this in the past with multiple things, the broodmother masks, stink bugs, bombs, but can you do it with the spiky burr trap? The answer is yes. Similar to a bomb, this trap is able to hit the grub through the ground, and it has a very large range on it as well, so this is pretty useful for killing them, although a very expensive method to do it as well. Following on from this myth, we have a follow-up from Joystick Jettisoned, who says, Myth, can the green shield bug kill the grubs underground? Last time we tested the stink bug, and it wasn't able to kill grubs through the ground, but can we do it using the shield bug? After a lot of testing, and the shield bug doing a lot of farting, I can conclude that it is unable to kill the grubs through the ground, sadly. The next myth we have today is myth. Can you break a cracked rock using the burr traps? As you can see, I place down three burr traps and blow them up, but the rock stays intact. So, I decided to say screw it. I placed down as many burr traps as I possibly could. There was a lot, okay? And 
I shot them and exploded them all at once. And it actually broke the rock. Uh, I didn't expect this to happen because I thought it would break after one burr trap or none at all. You know what I mean? I didn't think the rocks actually have like a health bar that the more and more you hit it, the more it takes damage. But it has made me think maybe we can break it using Truffle Tussle, even though I failed in episode one and it just takes multiple hits. So if you want me to try it again with Truffle Tussle, leave a comment down below as a myth and I will include it in the next video. The next myth we have in today's episode involves the burr traps yet again. Myth, can you open the haze lab using burr traps? As you can see, I placed down three burr traps and blew them up, but the door remained closed. After the previous myth, I had to try more. And on the fifth trap, the door was blown open. Not the cheapest way to open the haze lab, but it works. The next myth we have today is a little trick you can use if you want to hide stuff from your friends. Myth you can make invisible trail markers on the map. The trail marker is an item in the game that you can use to mark off certain areas and complete certain quests for Burgle. You can give them an image that allows you to see them anywhere on the map, but you can also place them down and set them to have no image at all. However, if you do this and hover over the area of the map where you place the trail marker, it will say that there's an empty trail marker in this location. meaning you can use it as a secret marker to make a base hidden from your friends. The next myth we have today comes in from Mike Steenhout, and he says, Myth, can you shoot the fireflies when they are flying in or leaving in formation? As you can see here, I managed to catch the fireflies right as it turned to day, and they were flying away in formation. Then, the arrow hit them, and of course, it damaged them. The answer is yes, this is definitely true. The next myth we have today is an expensive one if you want to try it yourself. Myth. Can you complete a mixer without killing any enemies? Now this is going to be hard, but I'm here at the easiest mixer in the grasslands. Let's build. As you can see, I build a mushroom brick structure, two layers thick, which should hopefully stop anything from getting in. Let's get mixing. As you can see, the red soldier ants are the only ones able to do a lot of damage to the walls. By the end, there were a few walls missing, but the mixer didn't take any damage itself, and I was able to complete it with no kills. Myth confirmed. The next myth we have is like a game of hot potato. Myth, can you pick up a bomb after throwing it? So I have a brat burst in my hand. I'm going to throw it, which starts the fuse, and then run over and press X, and it picks it up. So this is true. If you accidentally throw a bomb, you can run over and pick it up to stop it exploding. The final myth of today's episode was sent in by Snapdragon, and they say myth, can Splatburst stick on a bounce web? This is like testing two opposites. The bounce web is supposed to bounce everything that touches it, but the Splatburst is supposed to stick everything. Which will prevail? The answer is neither. The Splatburst doesn't stick, but it also doesn't bounce. This might be the weirdest myth ever, but it's busted, I guess. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit the like button. Comment your grounded myths down below. If I didn't use yours in this episode, it'll probably be in the next one, as I have a long list of myths to get through. See you next time, and have a great rest of your day.